Thanks to Brilliant for supporting my channel. DeepMind recently announced that they had solved a new milestone in competitive programming with their model AlphaCode, which essentially solves competitive programming problems roughly as well as humans do. If you're new here, I'm Jordan. I'm a PhD student at MIT. Consider subscribing if you want to stay up to date on AI news and research, or if you want to learn more about what it's like to be a grad student. All right, so we've already seen another big announcement of a model relating to generating code using machine learning in the past year or so, and that model is OpenAI's Codex. However, Codex didn't focus on competitive programming specifically, but on generating code based on prompt inputs more broadly. So why is DeepMind focusing on competitive programming? Based on their blog post and the paper, there are a couple reasons, but I think the main two are that they are interested in generating novel programs, so novel program synthesis, and they are interested in developing models that can perform human-like problem solving on open-ended questions. And competitive programming is a really interesting example of that because it essentially allows them to test their code and test their model on problems that have known solutions. These are competitive programming problems that have solutions that people have solved in the past and that we can test to see whether or not you arrive at the correct solution. But at the same time, it's a problem space where the possible solutions that you come up with are pretty large. So you could use a variety of different programming languages in the first place, and then how you actually arrive at the solution to whatever the programming problem is can vary based on how you decide to implement it. In the case of OpenAI's Codex, one of the issues that it often ran into when it came to especially competitive programming, but also generating code in general was that it often copied large chunks from the training data, which first of all isn't necessarily novel because it's something that someone else wrote in the past that the model is essentially copying and pasting into the solution, and also creates some potential legal problems, which I talked about in my video on OpenAI Codex last year. So how did they develop the AlphaCode model? Well, AlphaCode is a transformer model, so as usual, we are looking at large language models with transformer architectures. At some point, I'll probably do a video unpacking transformers. If you'd like to see that video, let me know in the comments. But essentially what they do is pre-train their model on public GitHub code. This includes several different programming languages to capture a wide array of possible solutions. This also brings up the unresolved licensing issue when it comes to whether or not you can use GitHub repositories this way, which is legally nebulous, but they actually talk about that uh, towards the end of the paper. They then fine-tuned their model on a data set that they pulled from Code Contests, which essentially is a repository of different competitive programming problems and solutions. And so this is probably, if you look at models like OpenAI Copilot, OpenAI Codex, this is probably why those models don't perform super well in these types of questions because they haven't been fine-tuned to essentially read the format of these types of questions and be more familiar, to use an anthropomorphizing term, uh, with how to solve them and how to kind of parse them. From there, the model essentially generates a ton of possible solutions and then filters those solutions based on the test cases given for a particular problem statement. So I'll put up an example problem that they include in the blog post, you can see that there are basically example test cases that showcase what your system should output if you did it correctly. And so the filtering process basically takes, you know, thousands to hundreds of thousands of potential solutions and checks them against the example test cases to filter them down to still potentially thousands of solutions that address the test cases correctly. However, because in competitive programming you're usually limited in the number of solutions you can submit, so if you're looking at a place like Kaggle, there's usually a limit of submissions per day. If you're looking at places like Codeforces, there's a limit of submissions in total. And so they need to filter down to a certain number. The number that they tend to test in this paper is 10, 10 solutions overall. Um, but you can obviously have fewer or more solutions depending on the competitive programming challenge that you have to be working on. So in order to take the still fairly large number of potential solutions they have and collapse it down to the number that it's going to actually submit, the researchers behind this model actually developed a separate clustering algorithm that runs each of these solutions on the given inputs and then clusters them based on their outputs. And the idea here is that 
the number of outputs that are correct is likely a fairly large cluster. So you have a bunch of different ways of arriving at code that results in the same answer. And the code that does not result in the right answer generates outputs that vary enough where you're going to have kind of tiny clusters of random things that are easier to kind of filter out of your solution set. And I thought this was, I don't know, an interesting and cool approach because it does kind of feel like how people approach these types of problems and how we learn to do things like competitive programming challenges or any other tasks that's kind of similar in the sense that, you know, you generally learn how to code and then you practice on problems that are analogous to the problems that you're going to be solving and then you implement based on the actual problems that you're being tested on, which I don't know, I thought that was cool. So in terms of how this model actually performed in simulated participation in Code Forces context, so they got permission from Code Forces to have AlphaCode run simulated contests in 10 different contests that had already happened. Uh, AlphaCode performed about as well as the median participant, which is to say, not amazingly, so you can actually see from this chart, um, <laughs> the median participant isn't necessarily good at this, but it is useful to have essentially a human gold standard comparison to look at when we do these types of things. Uh, they also actually made a website that you can play with in terms of seeing how confident the model is of its prediction with each individual code fragment. I think it's alphacode.deepmind.com. I'll link it in the description, but it's a pretty cool website if you're curious as to how the model comes up with the solutions that it generates. And then they also actually released a data set of the competitive programming problems and solutions that they used to fine tune the algorithm so that other people can benchmark their models against AlphaCode and against this data set, uh, which is definitely helpful. That's always been an ongoing challenge when it comes to replicating other people's results is just like not having access to their data. So I think it's pretty cool that they decided to release this data set so that other people can compare in a way that is actually a one-to-one -one comparison. So if you're interested in working with models like AlphaCode or even developing them yourself, but you don't know where to start on your machine learning journey, I would highly recommend checking out Brilliant, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. If you've heard me talk about Brilliant before, then you know that it's an online interactive STEM learning platform built off the principle of active problem solving. Brilliant has an ever-growing catalog of courses in math, science, and computer science that help you learn concepts by working through them yourself in visual, hands-on ways. In fact, Brilliant recently updated a bunch of their courses to be even more interactive. Have you ever wanted to learn how computer programming works but were put off by the opaque coding language? Brilliant can help you learn how to program without having to dig through the weeds of coding syntax through these fun interactive challenges. You just shift around these blocks of pseudocode and then you get immediate feedback on your results. It's a great way of understanding how computer algorithms work and then once you have that down, the coding syntax becomes a lot less intimidating. To get started for free, go to brilliant.org slash Jordan or click on the link in the description and the first 200 people to sign up using my link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. You can also check out my earlier video on OpenAI Codex up here. You can follow me on all my various socials down here and otherwise I'll see y'all next week. Bye!